Professor Werner? One might assume that in a capitalistic market system, all credit needs would be very simply met. But the reports are that in Britain, anyway, small and medium-sized businesses are unable to obtain credit. This must hold back growth. Does it point to something being wrong with the UK banking system, do you think? Right, well, let's keep in mind that banks have been given a crucial task in the economy, um, which at the same time is a privilege. Banks in in all countries um, at the moment have been given the privilege to create the money supply and allocate the money as they see fit. Now, over time, of course, this accumulation of credit allocation decisions by banks will shape the economy. Right. And despite this crucial role and this long-term impact on the the economic landscape, banks weren't told when they were given this privilege to create and allocate the money supply, now go out and do this wisely. Um, They weren't told to do that. And, of course, what they've been doing is really just look after their own interests. Right. As it turns out, they can't even look after themselves. Just look at the banking crisis. So this just shows the, the great need um, for banks to receive help from the government um, in making sure that what they do is good for the banking system in the long run, is sustainable, and most importantly, is good for the economy. Now, when we look at particular countries, say the UK, um, I mean, we, we find that each country has certain national characteristics in the structure of the banking system. Okay. In many ways, the UK is an extreme case. Um, But let's just compare the UK with um, another major economy in Europe, Germany. When we look at the UK banking system, we notice that about 90% of deposits, 90% of the banking market is accounted for by five banks. (laughs) So we have a highly concentrated banking system. These are the five main high street banks. And of course, the trouble is when you have so few very, very large banks, and of course also large internationally, they also do business outside the UK, then as a large firm, as a large uh, uh, profit-oriented player, they want to um, deal with large customers. And that means UK small firms are not very high on their list. In fact, they're more or less a hassle. Because, of course, the cost in terms of doing due diligence and credit analysis of a small firm that wants £20,000 loan is about the same as for a large firm that wants £200 million loan. Right. But, um, (laughs) um, of course, if you focus only on the big projects, you're neglecting something in the economy. The economy will become much much more centralised. The big banks deal mainly with the big firms. And, of course, the local economy, regional growth uh, will be neglected. Right. And small firms and also start-up firms have a very hard time getting funding. And this has been a problem in the UK. Now, let's compare with Germany. Can I? So so just to recap, in the UK, in in sort of marketing terms, the marketing credit doesn't really seem to work uh, because the scale of the main suppliers... Is a, is a mismatch to the local small needs. Absolutely. It, it's that's a right. marketing failure. Marketing failure. Yes, yeah, so, well, that's of course because the banks just look after what's good for them. And right. for the banks, right. it's, the way it is. it's most attractive and most profitable to only deal with the large firms. So mm-hmm. they're not interested in dealing yeah. with the small firms. But at the, so same time, mm-hmm. at the same time, the banks have succeeded through their lobbying and they're the biggest uh, provider of... Uh, political campaign money in in most countries in the world, also in the UK, they've succeeded in suppressing um, a whole alternative banking system, which is local and small scale. So if we compare the UK with Germany, you find that, um, so what's, what's, you know, the the five, six high street banks accounting for 90% of banking in um, in in the the UK. UK, In Germany, actually, is only around 12% of the banking market. And the 
so it's therefore very small. The high street banks in total account for only 12% right. of the banking right. market. Right. Whereas the majority of banking is actually supplied by small, many small local banks, banks with local headquarters, not a headquarter in London, but say locally in Winchester, there'd be several banks with their headquarters here. That would be sort of the system in Germany. And of course, because each bank is smaller, it's quite happy, in fact, it needs to deal with small customers. Um, and therefore, you get a much more diverse economy where local craftsmanship, um, medium-sized firms, family-owned firms get the support from their banks that they need in the, in the local economy. The, the two types of banks that make up for this majority of the local economy um, are basically the, the credit unions and local municipality-owned or local city-owned or local district publicly-owned banks. Right. So we've got local publicly-owned banks and local credit unions, cooperative banks owned by their members and headquartered locally. The credit unions um, account for around 30% of banking in Germany and the local government-owned banks account for around 40%. So in total, 70% is accounted for by these local banks. Right. And of course, that right. creates a completely different dynamics and it goes back to the point that your banking system will ultimately shape your economy. Here is a banking system in Germany where um, it's the local needs that will be listened to and the local bank in a local small town, because it's headquartered there, can make the decisions. Right. Here, you have to go to High Street in the UK, um, High Street Bank branch, and most of the time they will ask headquarters some kind of anonymous credit scoring um, program is going to right. make the decision. Right. Of course, this is also not very good for trust and um, you know mutual credibility. And, and of course, to to make a loan sustainable, it's it's very important that there is a relationship of trust between the bank and the customer. And this is much more likely to take place on a local smaller scale where the bank knows the customer and the customer knows the bank and perhaps as a child grew up knowing this bank manager right. um, and so on. So you know, how likely is it that he's going to run with the money? Right, it's right. far less likely in this much more local, um, also you know, personal, person-to-person so, so person based system. Right, and it also supplies, it gives a money supply, a local money supply. Exactly, is, that, that's, that's the other uh, component. I mean, in the UK and many other countries in the last... Um, 10, 20 years, people have realized that for sustainable economic activity, we also need to um, encourage local economic activity where there's not such you know, carbon foot uh, mileage in, in transporting things around the world. And so this idea of local currencies has been promoted. And this Lewis pound, for example, or some, some local currencies that have been issued. That's now, Lewis in Sussex in, that's in right. England. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, these systems, they don't add to the money supply. Actually, there is already a local currency system in place in, in countries such as Germany where we have these local credit unions and the local publicly owned banks. Because of course, as we said, when banks grant credit, they create money. So that's your local money supply right. that is right. injected right. locally. Right, um, where it's wanted. So you, you do get a much more decentralized economy that responds much better to local needs and there's much more diversity in such a system and of course a more centralized system tends to be just good for the very few oligopolistic banks. Yeah, so Germany's got a good record of growth, steady growth uh, over quite a, a length of time? Yes, looking at the financial crisis of course also makes this point that the, these locally um, headquartered banks, they're not interested in the speculative credit very much because um, that's particularly attractive to the large banks. Right. Whereas the local banks want to lend locally and they're not very much interested in investing in, say, credit derivatives based on US subprime or some other foreign um, you know, right. financial instruments. Right. As a result, they did very well in the financial crisis um, and therefore it's, it's clear that this is much more sustainable. It, it leads to more stable growth few economic cycles, um, and when there's a crisis, there's more, um, you know, durability um, in the system. Right. 
Um, and so these are key advantages of a, a locally based, right. decentralized uh, right. credit system. Right. So th this credit union uh, type of banking, what's the scale of it in the UK? In the UK, credit unions are tiny. Um, they account for less than 2% of banking. So that's a shockingly low number. In Germany, as we said, it's, it's around 30%. In fact, in many countries in both Europe, but also, say, even Ireland or Canada and the US, credit unions are a much bigger part of the economy. So, well, basically, legislation in the UK has been very much against credit unions. Um, and the legislation has favoured the large uh, banks. So, of course, the role of the, of the authorities is very important. Um, and certainly in some countries, in Germany, um, the, the credit unions have, have uh, been always part of the system and the regulators have always allowed them to create and allocate credit. Right. Um, so the role of the regulators is, is important. Uh, in Germany, the, the Bundesbank, the central bank, well, before the introduction of the euro and the ECB, was the independent central bank. It was also the you know, a key bank regulator, and it's it succeeded really in avoiding an acid bubble in Germany. There hasn't been an acid bubble since the Second World War. Right. Um, while the Bundesbank is was independent, now it's a different story with the ECB. Of course, that's what's likely to happen next. But um, you see, the role of the um, of the central bank is also important. Right. One would have thought that with the uh, a good example of Germany having sustainable growth over a long period uh, that other countries around the world are, are learning from that example. Is that so? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> That's not uh, what's happening. Um, quite the contrary, both the European Union and also other international organizations are putting enormous pressure on Germany to get rid of its quite successful system. Um, even the Basel III uh, capital adequacy is putting pressure on the likes of credit unions, credit cooperatives. Really? Um, and there's very strong pressure uh, from the EU Competition uh, Commission to uh, really break up the banking system. Now, of course, this is, I think, ultimately the banks, the big banks, the high street banks talking. They want to get rid of this competition. Right. Yeah, right. Um, but of course, we see that this is much more in line with a sustainable. Um, stable economic growth uh, type of system and therefore we shouldn't abolish them, we should uh, encourage them in other countries such as the UK. Right, so you, you see this as a, a banking for a big society, big society bank really needs to be a big society banking, a, a completely different and the bank look should, at the system. And the really. banks should be small really, Right. <laughs> so big right. society <laughs> bank, bank should consist of banks. many small banks. <laughs> right, thanks, thanks very much. On our next uh, video, Professor Werner will talk about debt-free and interest-free money. Mm -hmm.